Example 58. After shuffling a deck of cards well, is selecting five cards from the deck constitute a random sample of five cards? If so, what is the probability that any particular sample of five cards is chosen? All right, so it's a probability problem, right? Um, and they ask us first if after shuffling a deck of cards well, is selecting five of those cards a random sample of cards? Well, I would say yes to the first question, right? I think it's clear that if the cards are shuffled adequately, that randomizes them, right? So when we take five cards off the top, you know, it's equal. Car every card has an equal chance of being selected, so it makes it a random sample of five cards. So I think the answer to the first question is clearly yes. By shuffling the deck well, taking five cards from the top of it should be a random selection because we don't know which card will turn up at the top, right? So it's a random. Um, scrambling of the cards and of course there's equal probability that any card could make it in that five card hand. All right from there though then we have to answer the question here. If so what is the probability that any particular sample of five cards is chosen? So that's a probability problem and it just says a particular sample of five cards. So let's just make up one just so we have something to think about. So you know if I have five cards being chosen it could be any five cards but they're saying you know a particular five card hand. You know, for example, you could have four kings, right? And maybe the ace of hearts, right? So that could be a five card hand. And of course, the four kings would actually have to be, you know, um, like the king of diamonds, king of hearts, king of spades, king of clubs. And one thing that's important to realize in cards, it doesn't matter the order in which this is selected. So no matter how you scramble up these five cards, it's the same five card hand in a game of poker or any other game that involves cards. The order of the cards does not matter. Okay, so this is a particular hand. So what would be the probability we would randomly grab that hand from the top of the deck? That would be the same probability we grabbed any particular five card hand. Well, the probability of getting that hand, right? So the probability of a particular hand, right? Of five cards is equivalent to finding the probability we get that hand. Well, the answer to that is pretty simple. There's only one hand like that, right? Only one hand that's like that. The difficult part is this part, right? Which is the total number of possible hands, right? So this part here would have to be what? The number of hands like this is one. The total number of possible five card hands though is not so easy. Five card hands, I didn't mean to write cards hands, but <laughs> card hands, let's just fill that in now. So one over the total number of possible five card hands, that's a little harder to answer. For that we're going to need to think about a counting technique, I think, right? Because what am I saying here? I'm saying how many possible five card hands are there? If I asked you that question, you, you wouldn't pop into your head right away. But you do hear the key phrase, how many possible five card hands are there? That phrase, how many, that question of how many hands are there, that reminds us of the key words for a counting topic, right? How many is the indication we should use some counting method. So how do we count up the number of five card hands? Well, it's not simple, but if we think about the rules that we're supposed to use to think of how to count up a set of possibilities here, we would you know, first approach it with combinations and see if combinations fits. If combination fits, we should use it, right? So let's try that. Let's see if combination works. In combinations, there has to be a, a large set of things that we're drawing a subset from, right? The word large is relative, but you know, just a set of things that we're going to draw a subset from. So do we have that scenario here? Yeah, I think so, right? There are 52 cards in a deck of cards. So we're going to choose five cards from that deck of 52 cards. So I would say that meets the requirement of a combination. The only last thing to talk about then is, does order matter? In other words, like we've spoken about already, if I were to scramble up these five cards, would that change the hand that I hold? And I'd say no. I mean, if the ace was first, and the four kings followed, or if the ace was in the middle, it wouldn't make a difference. I still have four kings and an ace of heart, right? So at that point, you know, I don't think anything changes. So order doesn't seem to be relevant here. And if that's the case, combinations fits perfectly. So let's go ahead and say that the answer to the denominator here is going to be out of 52 cards, you want to choose five of them. And so that's your answer. It's going to be one over whatever this turns out to be. So, you know, if we work that out using a calculator, it would give us the answer right away. If we do it by hand, you know, of course, it's going to be uh, 52 factorial over 5 
five factorial, right? This guy on top factorial, that guy on the bottom factorial, and then the difference between these two factorial. So that would be 47 factorial. And then remember, we'd count this one down to it got to 47 factorial, then we'd cancel those out, and then we would you know, clean up and simplify. I'm just gonna let our calculator do it because it's just so much faster. So let's do that with the calculator. So pulling up the calculator, we'll have um, just for the denominator, we're going to do 52. In my calculator, the way this is done is I press the math symbol and I arrow to the left to where the PRB menu comes up and I'll take option 3, which you can see is NCR. So 52 NCR and then I'm going to take the number 5. If I do that, I get the answer. So this is a pretty big number. It's uh, 2.6 million roughly, right? It's 2,598,960 unique five card hands that can occur when drawing five cards from the deck. And then at that point, all that's left to do is to divide these two and we get a decimal. And obviously the decimal here is going to be pretty small. Um, if I do that just to see what it is in the calculator, it's scientific notation. So the answer is approximately, there's going to be six zeros after the decimal point here. And the answer is 385, 385. The reason why it's six zeros is because that's like times 10 to the negative seven. So if the decimal place was here, we'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's where we get the six zeros. So this is extremely small. The probability of getting this exact hand when grabbing five cards from a well-shuffled deck is exceedingly small. Very, very, very unlikely. Okay, so, oh, by the way, though, if that seems very small, keep in mind that that's still way more likely than winning the Florida lottery, for example, right? So uh, people who play the lottery should keep into perspective how likely it is that you would actually win the big jackpot. But anyways, there's the answer to the problem, and we see that not always is it easy to come up with these totals, right? Sometimes the denominator or the numerator, or sometimes both, is very difficult to calculate, and we have to use a method that we learned earlier on to get the answer.